Sports is a world of measurement. Let's take a sport like, like basketball, where players attempt to make baskets. No, I meant ball and hoop type baskets. Suppose I tell you a player averages 23 points per game. Is that a good player, a bad player, a great player? A good coach would know that based off this limited information, it would be impossible to answer that question with any certainty. I mean, basketball is about more than just scoring, right? Players can block shots, rebound missed shots, steal the ball, and assist others in scoring. They can also make a number of mistakes that benefit their opponents. So, now, what if I tell you that the player averages 23 points, 9 rebounds, 12 assists, and 4 steals per game? Is that a good player, a bad player, a great player? A poor coach might be tricked into answering that question, but a good coach would still realize that those statistics measure only certain aspects of effectiveness. To truly assess this player, you still need more information. How many shots did they take? How many minutes did they play? How many possessions did their team have during the game? In essence, a good coach wants to know how the player made use of their resources. Okay, so suppose I gave you the shots, minutes, possessions, available rebounds, and any other efficiency-related data. Would you feel comfortable making a decision about that player? Think before you answer. What other type of data would you want? I would want to know situational data. Suppose those 23 points, 9 rebounds, 12 assists, and 4 steals were accumulated by a tall 25-year-old man against the worst defenders in blowout games in a league of 5-year-old children. Still feeling good about this player's statistics? What we're seeing is that not every set of data is sufficient in helping us make good decisions. A good system of metrics needs to provide information on effectiveness, efficiency, and adaptability. And this isn't just true for sports like basketball. Businesses constantly seek to collect and study data in an effort to make good decisions. In fact, humans are hopelessly addicted to metrics that will aid them in making good decisions. What time is it? What's the temperature? What's your grade in this class? These are numbers that guide our actions. You see, performance metrics can actually motivate the behaviors of athletes, employees, students, and business partners. As the manager of a global supply chain, how can you know if your supply chain is effective, efficient, and adaptable? How can you motivate employees and supply chain partners thousands of miles away to do the things your customer and your company value most? And how can you identify those employees that deserve raises and promotions, as well as those who need assistance, additional training, or perhaps disciplinary action? What we're seeing is that a good system of performance metrics can provide guidance for managers, employees, and even customers. But to do so, modern managers, especially supply chain managers, must marry quantitative skill, psychological understanding, and operational know-how to develop the right performance measurement tools and systems so their companies can achieve their own unique set of goals. And this is an enormous challenge. Like a basketball coach, supply chain managers need to identify their best players, identify and improve the weaknesses of the team, know which situations provide the team with the best opportunities, and also understand which resources are being wasted. But your team is made up of thousands of players all over the world, and it's your job to get them all working toward the same set of goals. So, don't let bad numbers lead you down a destructive path. Take control of the numbers and let them guide your team to an effective, efficient, and adaptable global supply chain.